So Malik Neighbors, we just heard from him. We saw him engage uh, at training camp in the last couple of days. Um, but there's not much he can't do on the field. To consider a rookie receiver and what impact he could have on a team's offense, Peter, what's the extent of the impact? Yeah, look, quarterback's the most important position. I would even argue left tackle's more important than receiver. But there is a history of rookie wide receivers coming to teams and taking them over the top. I got two names, the two best rookie seasons I have ever seen in both those teams went to A, the NFC Championship game, and B, the Super Bowl. When you talk about Randy Moss and Jamar Chase, those are the, are the highest of praise you could possibly have. And that's when you're talking about what a rookie wide receiver can do. Look at this. Look at the numbers, the catch is great, the yards, the touchdowns, both won AP NFL Rookie of the Year, and if you're Randy Moss, you took a Vikings team that was fine in 97, and you helped get them to the NFC Championship game. If you're Jamar Chase, you take a team <laughs> that didn't have a ton of success the year before, and you get them to a Super Bowl. You're talking about two of the all-time great rookie seasons, and that's the highest of the high. But yeah, those two guys took over the league and did so in such a way that they carried their teams as well. Can Malik Neighbors do that? Why not? Muscles with Cunningham? Muscles with Cunningham. Yeah. Neighbors mm. with Burrow, Burrow who's yeah. college teammate. Chase, bro. Yeah. I'm not saying the Giants are going to the Super Bowl. I'm not saying Malik Neighbors is in that conversation. But Akbar, I will say this. There has been precedent of certain star players entering this league and not only having great individual seasons, but also saying, hey, don't worry. I can get us over the hump, too. I think that's the expectation when you draft a receiver top 10 in this case Malik Neighbors the second wide receiver off the board yeah you know and, and you know the high picks are, are one that have expectations it's always cool to see the ones that people don't expect the ones in the middle of the draft at the end of the draft mm. I think of Puka Nakua and how he came as a fifth rounder broke rookie record set rookie set a rookie record um, in 1486 yards in his in his rookie campaign I mean he became that guy uh, for for the Rams helped them get to uh, to the playoffs. I mean, you know, he was a very dependable wide receiver. So I think when you get a young wide receiver that can gel in, that understands the game, he can obviously help out a team. Uh, and I think a guy who could do that this year in this rookie class is none other than Marvin Harrison Jr. Mm. Uh, Marvin Harrison Jr., I think he's coming into a situation where he is going to be the guy. He's going to be the focal point. He is the star wide receiver. Mm -hmm. We already know what Kyler Murray can do. Now you give him a legitimate weapon like a Marvin Harrison Jr. Oh, man. I, I mean, I think he may break Puka Nakua's record. Okay. Because that's going to be the emphasis. Now, uh, you know, Puka Nakua had Cooper Cup when Cooper Cup was healthy, you know, coming in there. They had some other elements, but I, I think he is the main guy there. Feels good to see a wide receiver for the Cardinals running around like Larry Fitzgerald. You know, yeah. it, feels, it feels right. It feels right, Kyle. It does feel right. I don't, what, what doesn't feel right because we haven't done it in so long is hyping the Cardinals. But I just want to put this out there right now. When we get to division picking time and everything and playoff teams, guys, I, the Cardinals are going to be my special team that I spring on people. I want dibs on them. I don't what? want Akbar, Peter, Jamie. Being, I like the Cardinals too. I want the Cardinals. I'm claiming them. We'll get to that in a minute. Um, Roma Doomsday, I want to mention him quickly. Not featured a ton on Hard Knocks last night. If you saw the episode, it was a lot of uh, the head coach and the quarterback. The advantage that he's going to have that someone like Harrison doesn't is Roma Dunze is, I think, the three. Like, it's because you got Keenan and DJ. Those are made, those are friends of ours. Like, <laughs> Roma Dunze is going to be going against uh, nickel corners, maybe, the linebackers. Like, he's going to have a lot of opportunities. But I want to bring it back to Neighbors because one of the jokes that was prevalent on the internet when Neighbors was drafted was that, ha ha, he clearly doesn't want to be a giant. I mean, that's a joke that was out there. He doesn't want to play with Daniel Jones and people dissecting his body language or his tone of voice when he got the call or when he first saw them. I can tell you emphatically from sitting there watching him for two hours yesterday, there is no part of him that doesn't want to be out there, that does not want to be involved, because we can play the fight over and over, and we have, and we will. The real substance of material here is this. <laughs> does that look like a guy who's just who's like, no, man, I would have rather been a Patriot or a Steeler or a Bear? No. I don't even know how he felt at the time. I don't care. I saw him the first week in August when it's about 90 degrees out and people are punching him playing like it's the NFC title game. Love it. So Beautiful. Giants fans, Beautiful. fantasy yeah. drafters, meme makers, I don't know how he felt about being a Giant. I know how he felt about being a Giant yesterday, and he looked great. Committed, 
playing hard, running out routes. When the ball's not to him, he's not throwing his hands up. Like, he looked like a, a guy who's in his third year who's trying to get his contract extension. He looked great. He wants to be there. He deserves to be there. So I think neighbors have a big opportunity. You know, there's an interesting part of this whole thing. We talk about these rookie wide receivers. Because we had the access to hard knocks, the Giants had Mike Grow, their wide receivers coach, yeah. in one of these rare deals where instead of taking each guy individually for the team's 30-man visits, the Giants had in Marvin Harrison Jr., Roma Dunze, and Malik Neighbors one by one by one in the same room on the whiteboard doing their visit with the Giants the same exact day. And when they left, John Mara, the CEO and president and owner of the Giants, said to Mike Groh, the wide receivers coach, who'd you like? He said, I would take Neighbors first overall. Mm. You better believe Marvin Harrison Jr. heard that. You better mm. believe Roma Dunze heard that. And you better believe that clip will live on forever if mm. anything other than success happens for neighbors, and those two other guys go on to be superstars. So the expectations are high for a lot of these rookies. Malik Neighbors with the Giants, he has been great through a couple of weeks of training camp, but you better believe he is expected to take this team to a different level, and he's expected to be the number one wide receiver this season. Interesting, just uh, conceptually, the fact that we brought up Neighbors, Adunze, and Harrison Jr. Like These are all rookie wide receivers that are working with on the younger side quarterbacks, yeah. whether it be a Caleb Williams as a rookie or young guys like Kyler and Daniel Jones. Like with Puka last year, he's playing with Matt Stafford. Like right. that, I think he benefited from that. So the impact of a rookie wide receiver hinges so much on the competency of the quarterback. So the, the fact that their success relies fully on, on young quarterbacks, I think is, is just something interesting to watch. It, it also works the other way too, because if you've got a guy who's a clean route runner, runner, a guy who can get open, a guy who has big range, it can make it very easy for, you know, for a quarterback. But, you know, I'm thinking back, you know, to something my dad told me. My dad used to say, the quiet ones are the ones you have to be careful for because mm. those are the ones that mm. will definitely, like, come out and fight. And I, I think about Marvin Harrison Jr., you know, yeah. seeing that video and seeing that they would take neighbors over him. I think about he's just a quiet personality type of guy. He was also a guy, too, that was the Heisman Trophy finalist. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, and he didn't win the Heisman Trophy. So he's got a chip for as good as he is, being a two-time All-American, all of the accolades that he gets, for as quiet as he is and as good as he is, they, they still not showing the love that he needs. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. I could see him coming out and saying, now what? And I'm going to be rookie uh, of the year.